Good afternoon everyone. Hope uh, you are doing very well. Uh, today uh, I'm going to be discussing about NPV and investment criteria. The, this is going to be a very short uh, lecture. Uh, I should have discussed it uh, the previous uh, video lecture where uh, I discussed about how to calculate net present value. But nevertheless, uh, in this video lecture, uh, we're going to be uh, discussing about at present value and uh, investment criteria. Well, a different uh, companies may have uh, different criteria for uh, assessing the investment opportunity, but this uh, video gives a theoretical basic overview um, so that we can you know understand and can build foundation on that. Uh, just a quick review of uh, net present value. As we see here, uh, net present value is your cash flow and uh, present cash flow plus future cash flow divided by 1 plus R. 1 over 1 plus R, uh, we remember we, we discussed uh, in previous lectures 1 over 1 plus R means discount factor and R is discount rate okay now here we are assuming for each period the same discount factor but if you have say uh, different uh, discount rates for different periods what you can do you can get R1 and R2 you can calculate uh, you know you can <coughs> have different uh, discount rates now here we are saying that the uh, C0 is the uh, cash flow in but if you have say investment which is cash out right so what you can do we have to minus it okay because cash is going out or for the investment opportunity we need to represent it here so this this value will go here for your investment opportunity. Good. So this this was the uh, we, we learned in in previous video lecture about uh, net present value, uh, cash flow um, cash flow in present plus cash flow future expected cash flow, you know for each period divided by uh, one plus the discount rate. Okay. Now here this is interesting formula again. Say if you have uh, two projects and you want to calculate the net present value of overall project, what you can do? Net present value of both the projects is equal to net present value of first project plus net present value of second plus and so on if you have more projects. Okay. Uh, if you have say more projects here. A, B, C, that way. Now, interesting thing here, if I equate, okay, NPV is equal to zero, okay. So, what is the, what is the discount rate which makes NPV equal to zero? We can call it uh, the rate of return, in other words. So, if, if we equate NPV for, say, just uh, one period, current period plus one more period. Uh, so we get the discount rate equal to C1 divided by minus C0 minus 1. Now when you have investment, so C0 when you will put the value it will be 1. So this will be your rate of return. <coughs> or in, in other words, for, I mean in, in language you can say discount rate which makes NPV 0 is also the rate of return. Okay. Now, we if you have uh, say multiple periods, right, like for example, uh, as we discussed here, that you know, instead of having one period, you have multiple periods, so you can go all the way up to all different periods and calculate the NPV. Now, that will be is also known as internal rate of return or discounted cash flow. 
Now, what if uh, you equate that NPV for uh, multiple periods equal to zero? You, you can get the IRR, okay? Clear, this formula is clear. <clears throat> now, these two, two, two are important, NPV and, and as well as IRR. So, so you should not base your whole decision about investment on NPV. Uh, typically, what we say that if NPV net present value of your investment is greater than, you know, or positive, you accept the investment. But what if, uh, you know, you get uh, positive for first period and for positive for next period, then negative, uh, this is return. But so in, the, in those cases, if you calculate NPV, when you get the positive cash flow, positive cash flow and negative cash flow, um, based on, you know, if your discount rate is increasing, your NPV may increase. So it might not be a sound idea just to rely on NPV. Then you can, you know, also see the how much is my IRR for, for different periods. And then accumulate all information. Um, or synthesize the information before making a decision okay <clears throat> now say let's say you have uh, three projects or four projects or five projects what not you have to choose so in, in theory in subject uh, there are rules um, about NPV first you check NPV then you check I, uh, IRR and then you sort of take a decision but there is another way, another very simple way to, to look at these things along with NPV and IR, IRR that you calculate the profitability index. So what is the profitability index? Is your net present value divided by your total investments. Means let's say you put $100 today and if you get $110 next year, you are just, you know, made a 10% profit. So your profitability index would be 10. Now, same way you calculate the profitability index for all projects, right? A, B, C. Now you calculate the pro profitability index, uh, let's say period T1, T2, T3, okay? Calculate the profitability index, say 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, okay. Now for the another period, because you, you might have a different rate of return, you calculate again, here it might be 0 0.2, this might come down to 0 0.1, this might get to 0 0.5 right now for the another period you know it might come down to 0 0.1 b is 0 0.1 c is 0 0.4 this is just a hypothetical example which one would you choose clearly uh, the profitability index for different periods is better for c so you're gonna choose the c now, these are simple, fairly basic rules. Uh, well, in finance, uh, to, be, to be honest, uh, uh, there is no one rule, uh, you know, what economist or finance guys, we are trying to, you know, capture the volatility in the market and trying to put some numbers onto that in different forms. In different forms, for example, return, for example, uh, you know, we calculate variance and, you know, different statistical parameters or say present value and, and whatnot. So it's trying to, you know, uh, put numbers so that we can make inference of those numbers. But always remember, never one method is perfect. So check NPV before, you know, you propose uh, based on, just based on numbers, your decision check NPV, synthesize NPV, check IRR,
and check the profitability index. And if uh, everything matches up and then finally uh, you, your uh, basically return is coming positive or um, how much investment you are putting your money is coming back uh, with excess return and you should accept that investment. Now for, for uh, you know numerical examples uh, you can solve uh, in, in your textbook there are many examples. But the important uh, idea here is to grasp the concept. If you have good concept, um, it's just rest of the job is mechanical. You can use calculator or whatnot. But important is to, to make uh, assessment or to infer the information or to synthesize the information um, what your mechanical methods are produ producing. So thank you guys. I hope you have uh, like this quick uh, overview or quick uh, two, two cents about NPV and investments. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the Professor YouTube channel. Uh, thank you for subscribing and supporting us. Have a wonderful day.